Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for some character sheets, and remember to like and subscribe for a promotion next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Albert Wesker, unliving proof that working for a corporate entity goes better when you're a self-serving jerk who would burn the company down if it was in your best interest. Wesker is the Dwight Schrute of Umbrella. No, I'm not taking questions. Yes, I want an office reboot about Umbrella. Yes, I'm willing to write it. Email me. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to not die, with the T-Virus consistently repairing our cells as they get shredded by the stars. Next, we need to be so fast it pretty much lets us teleport, zooming like we're trying to run a meeting in 2020. Finally, we need some assistance. That's an entry-level position. They just need to be big, hungry, and have three to five years of experience working in a corporate setting. It's also an unpaid position, but it's great for networking. No, it isn't. It's a bad job, don't work for Umbrella. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but hot dang, we got some multi-classing minimums. Charisma will be number one. You constantly portray people you work with, then continue to work with them. Obviously, you're a charmer. Dexterity next, there's a couple of ways to get unarmed fighting, but you're really quick and don't wear heavy armor, so we'll get the Dexy one. Wisdom after that, medicine is a wisdom skill, and technically you work at a pharmaceutical company. I'd like intelligence to be higher, but it's not a multi-classing requirement, so a plus one modifier is gonna have to do for all your big brain plays. Constitution is also lower than I'd like, but your endurance isn't actually built in. It's technically the T-Virus that's keeping you alive. Finally, we'll dump strength on a character with super strength because we just need other stuff more. It happens sometimes. Wesker is a human. I know that he's pumped full of zombie juice, but that's something we gotta get later. Variant humans get a feat. The athlete feat will give you plus one to your strength or dexterity. Go for dexterity. This gives you a climbing speed equal to your normal speed. You can stand up from prone with five feet of movement instead of half, and you can jump with five feet of run-up instead of 10. The mobility is nice, but honestly, I just want as many ability scores as we can get. Speaking of, bump your dexterity and your charisma with your two free points, take intimidation for your skill of choice, and build your own background for deception and investigation. Call it the corporate infiltrator background to work your way to the top of the company, then destroy it and make it your company. But if we're gonna do that, we're gonna need some skills, like the two skills you would get from the monk list, like athletics and acrobatics, because hey, we dump strength, but your proficiency bonus now basically gets applied to all strength checks and saves, so they won't be negative. Hooray. You also get martial arts, letting you deal 1d4 plus your dexterity and bludgeoning damage when you hit someone with an unarmed attack, and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with an unarmed attack for a nice little combo. You also get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor, which is good because you can't wear armor and use martial arts. Being a monk is basically committing to a cool guy aesthetic, sunglasses, trench coats, that kind of thing. Second level monks get key points, but you could call them T points to do cool T virus stuff like Step of the Wind, which lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance for that round. We're not quite to teleporting just yet, but this will work for some supersonic speed. Wesker is the Shadow the Hedgehog of Resident Evil, don't at me. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. Nobody's hitting Wesker, this is probably the most accurate use of your key points. That or Flurry of Blows to let you attack twice as a bonus action instead of once to unload punches like the Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah, because he's made of punch. He's, he's a fruit punch, man. You also get unarmored movement, making you faster in a trench coat. Third level monks can deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level, and even yeet the ammo back with a key point. If the missile is like a fireball explosion type missile, this isn't going to work, but we're going to get something for that later. You get to choose a monastic tradition, and shadow monks are the spookiest kind of monk thanks to shadow arts. This lets you cast spells like darkness to create a 15-foot radius sphere of darkness that not even dark vision can see through. Pass without trace. Trace adds 10 to the stealth checks of creatures within 30 feet of you, including you. Dark vision gives a creature 60 feet of dark vision for 8 hours, and silence prevents any sound from making it out of a 20 foot radius sphere. All of these cost 2 key points and can help you out if you need to get some infiltration going. Fourth level monks get an ability score improvement, get that dexterity up first. We'll need charisma later, but for now you're just punching. We're still kind of building the pre-umbrella Wesker at this point. Just forget when I said that you had the T-Virus already. Don't worry, we're getting there. You also get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, adding one more thing to the list of things that can't kill you. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one or up to four with a flurry of blows to turn the red fields into the dead fields. 
then into the undead fields later when we can do that. You also get Stunning Strike, letting you force a constitution saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier on creatures when you hit them with a melee attack. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next turn. You have the movement speed of the Flash in a game where people can't walk and shoot at the same time. That's going to startle some people. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, making your attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances, so you can even put the beat down on Nemesis if you need to. You also get Shadow Step, letting you teleport from areas of dim or dark light to other areas of dim or dark light within 60 feet of you as a bonus action, and you get advantage on your next attack roll before the end of your turn. If people can't see you, they really can't be prepared to fight you. Seventh level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. You could call this deflect missile but specifically the exploding missiles, not just pieces of ammunition that are called missiles. To be fair, that name is kind of long. I can see why they went with evasion. You also get stillness of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening as an action. I'd imagine working for zombie Amazon desensitizes you pretty quickly to the spooky stuff. Eighth level monks get an ability score improvement, letting us cap off our dexterity just in time to start multi-classing. You've officially graduated from the Wesker program. Congratulations, now we need to find a job. We'll do that by multi-classing into Warlock, with a patron more sinister than Venom's symbiote or Ghost Rider's Satan bike. You get your powers from something truly evil the American pharmaceutical industry. But what kind of patron should Big Pharma be? Undying might seem good with all the zombies they make, but you can't make a walking corpse pay for insulin. Great Old One is something I considered, but they're a little too neutral evil. I think lobbying governments and artificially raising drug prices speaks to a sense of lawful evilness, like a devil. So Fiend Warlock is gonna be my pick. Devils in D&D lore love power, and they have established hierarchies and are the most likely to put together PowerPoint meetings about marriage marionetting politics to make the masses suffer. They'll also give you Dark One's Blessing, letting you give yourself temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level when you reduce a creature to zero HP, feeding the T-Virus by eating people. Just a little bit. Of course, you also get spells and cantrips. Eldritch Blast lets you shoot two beams that deal 1d10 force damage each. We'll reflavor this as a gun this time. We've reflavored it as a gun before and there's a bunch of other stuff. I think I made Banjo and Kazooie's eggs and Eldritch Blast. This is just sort of a generic range spell that you can put whatever flavor you want onto, like tofu. Chill Touch is a ranged spell attack that deals 2d8 necrotic damage and prevents the target from healing. Just because you're getting health back doesn't mean your enemies should be. For your first level spells, Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for 10 minutes depending on your concentration, which should help you save some key points when you don't want to use Step of the Wind. Though your spell slots are actually more limited than your key points, eh, it's kind of up to you. Manage it how you want. Charm Person charms a humanoid for an hour if they fail a wisdom saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier, helping you work with the good guys and then the bad guys because you're just a lying guy. Second level warlocks get invocations. Think of this as a perks package for signing up with the Devil Company. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor at will, which will make your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. It's an improvement over your unarmored defenses, but technically still doesn't count as putting armor on and forcing you to give up martial arts. It's a nice way to mix warlock and monks since you're going to ignore investing in the wisdom later. Fiendish Vigor lets you cast False Life on yourself at will, giving you 1d4 plus 4 temporary HP. Remember, temporary HP doesn't stack, but between this and Dark One's Blessing, you should have a way to keep that refreshing for something akin to regeneration. Third level warlocks get a Christmas bonus from their patron, and yeah, it's just an umbrella pin, so it's kind of their branding making you a walking advertisement, but the Pact of the Talisman lets you add a d4 to an ability check you fail an amount of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus, making you a little bit better at just about everything. You can also learn second level spells like Misty Step to teleport 30 feet as a bonus action even in the daylight. Obviously try to use the free teleporting from Shadow Step first, but this is a solid backup if someone turns the lights on. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement, bump up that charisma for more accurate gunshots. Look, maybe you just talk to your boss about getting a better gun than everyone else. Flavor's fun. For this level spell, Spider Climb lets you move up walls and on ceilings for an hour. We could have gone up walls with an extra level of monk, but I didn't want an extra level of monk. I wanted to be an evil zombie man. Fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Agonizing Blast lets you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast attacks since you're now shooting three beams that can lead to some serious 
damage at a distance. Really, no matter where your enemy is, they're going to be sad they're fighting you. For this level spell, Counter Spell lets you shut down a spell as a reaction if it's of third level or lower, and higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level. Who needs to evade the rocket when you can just delete the rocket? Sixth level fiend locks get Dark One's own luck, letting you add a d10 to a saving throw or ability check once per short rest, making sure that you absolutely succeed when you need to. For this level spell, Vampiric Touch lets you make a melee spell attack that deals 3d6 necrotic damage and heals you half that damage as an action for up to a minute depending on your concentration. This is for your regular HP, not your temporary HP, but more regeneration is better obviously. 7th level Warlocks can learn 4th level spells. Blight forces a constitution saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 8d8 necrotic damage. The T-Virus isn't for everyone. Maybe some people want the T-Veronica virus, or the G-Virus, or the Miley Cyrus. True Tulok fans know I love the climb. You also get another invocation. Devil's Sight gives you 120 feet of dark vision, and it can see through magical darkness that you create with darkness from Shadow Monk. Which is good, because otherwise wearing sunglasses at night kinda not the best idea. 8th level Warlocks get another ability score improvement, meaning that you get another capped stat if you invest in Charisma, which you should do for more damaging guns and harder to resist infection sprays. For this level spell, what if you had your own rocket? Fireball comes from the Fiend Lock list, and it forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere. Following that, they'd normally take 8d6 fire damage, but since you're a Warlock and will always be casting this with your highest level slot, it's 9d6 at this level and 10d6 at the next level. 9th level Warlocks learn 5th level spells. Far Step lets you teleport 60 feet as a bonus action every round for a minute. Why would you ever cast Misty Step ever again? You shouldn't. Don't. For this level's invocation, Protection of the Talisman lets you add a d4 to the saving throws you're not proficient with. So Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, everything you could possibly need to get at least one point better in. It's nice for someone who puts out big anime baddie energy. If there's anything stronger than an anime protagonist, it's an anime villain. 10th level fiend locks get fiendish resilience, letting you pick a type of damage you want resistance to on a short rest. Though keep in mind, magical and silver weapons still get to ignore this. Still, fire could be good, piercing, maybe? Who's going to give Leon silver bullets? For this level, spell scrying lets you get a little unethical government surveillance on, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures somewhere on the same plane, setting up an invisible sensor that will hear and see them. It can be modified if you've got a picture of them or some of their fingernails. You're a really creepy guy. Use that electric eye and all of your branded satellites to track your foes. Why is the umbrella branding on their satellites? Are they doing targeted ads exclusively for astronauts? 11th level warlocks get a mystic arcanum spell a little gift for sticking with the company for so long. It's a spell you can only use once per long rest, but Create Undead turns up to three medium corpses into ghouls under your control. You can command them with a bonus action, otherwise they'll just try and follow your orders or defend themselves as ghouls are wont to do. To maintain control over them, you have to cast this spell again within 24 hours, which can be tricky since the spell resets on a long rest instead of a short rest like your other spells. But the ghouls still stay ghoulish and you don't technically need to control them, so maybe just leave them in a house somewhere for a little domestic sinisterness. It's a bad name. I'll work on finding another one. Our capstone is the 12th level of Warlock for one last invocation. We'll grab Otherworldly Leap, letting you cast Jump on yourself at will, tripling your jump distance, pairing that with Step of the Wind. You'll actually be able to sextuple your jump distance to basically have a flying speed. For your last ability score improvement, go for Strength. You have Super Strength, it should at least not be negative. But if you want a power build and get something useful, maybe the Tough Feet so you don't die. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can move, with teleportation and big old jumps helping you get where you need to go. You're also great at self-restoration, getting a little extra health when you kill someone or whenever you use that fiendish vigor and vampiric touch. Finally, Eldritch Blast and Martial Arts are always ready to go, so you're always ready for a fight. But the reason you need those is because you're going to run out of spell slots and key points very fast. You're also really frail, even if you can recover HP with somewhere around 100, meaning that if someone has Power Word Kill, they could just make you Power Word dead. Finally, Monk and Warlock don't really jive together. You're not mixing the abilities from the classes, you're just kind of a 12th level Warlock and an 8th level Monk that got science together in a lab somewhere. But corporate synergy is nothing to fear, just look at Marvel vs. Capcom. Put the whole boot in your mouth and make everyone else bow down to your corporate overlords. Just remember, if your company is hurting people to make profit, eventually someone's gonna stop it, right? 
Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for character sheets and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.